We're going to talk about provision this morning. Amen. 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 Glory to God. We uh, uh, begin this series uh, called A Place Called There. And we have been exploring how some things can only happen uh, when, there is it, when it happens in a certain place. And last week we explored the brook. And how God told Elijah, he said, I want you to get by the brook because he was going to feed him there by commanding ravens to bring him a sandwich, bread and meat, and he would drink by the brook. And today I want to talk to you again about this place called provision, because as we see in the life of Elijah, that, that, that this brook that God told him to go to was going to be a place where God was going to provide for him. He was going to provide not only food, but he was going to provide protection. Yes. Not only protection, he was going to, amen, uh, hide him in that place, amen, from the enemy. Uh -huh. And so when the brook came to the place of drying up, amen, the Lord tells Elijah that I want you to go to the widow woman. He said, when you get to the widow woman's house, I have commanded the widow woman to provide. Somebody help me say provide. Provide. I mean, so all of this thing, amen, even though Elijah was the one that declared, amen, out of, the, out of his mouth uh, a prophetic word that there wasn't going to be rain, but God saw to it, amen, that the man of God was provided for. Mm -hmm. When we talk about the word provide or the word provision, it means the action of providing or supplying something for use. Mm -hmm. And so I just sense the Lord saying, amen, to encourage us today, amen, that we have reached the place of the second half of this year. Come on, sir. It's amazing yes, when you think about it, but the first half of this year has been going, and, and I don't know what it is that you have walked through and what you've experienced, but I prophesy today, amen, that the second half of this year yeah. is going to be a year, amen, that we're going to experience the commanded blessing of the Lord. Yeah, Lord. Within the commanded blessing of the Lord, yeah. he's going to show us like never before, amen, as him being our provider. Somebody help me say provider. Yeah. Uh, in Genesis chapter 22, I'm going to paraphrase a lot of this. Amen. Because we read the word of the Lord. But the word of the Lord comes in verse number one. And the Bible says that God comes to test Abraham. He tests Abraham by telling Abraham that I want you to take your son. He says, the scripture says, the one that thou lovest. Uh, and it was, it was his only son. God, uh, God uh, called Isaac the only son. Amen. You know Isaac, uh, Abraham had another son, but this was the son. And God tells him that I want you to take him, amen, to uh, Moriah. He says that I want you to offer him there as a burnt sac sacrifice. Now this is really interesting that the Lord... Amen. Requires uh, this of Abraham because you have to understand that Isaac is the son of promise. And when God initially gives uh, Abram the promise of Isaac, amen, Abram is about 75 years old. And the fulfillment of this promise did not happen for 25 years. We understand that when Isaac was born, that Abraham was about 100 years old. So he has already walked through the process of believing God, amen, and waiting on God and trusting God, amen, to have, amen, this son. And now God comes and tells him, now that you've got your son, I want you to take him and I want you to offer him as a sacrifice. My God. However, although uh, this was something, amen, that Abraham loved, we see that he was, here's the word, obedient. And this, because the scriptures tells us, amen, that Abraham rose, he saddled, he took some men, amen, and he went. Uh -huh. And yes, so sir. in other words here, he did, not, uh, he did not disobey God. And as we move into the place of total obedience, it's necessary, amen, if we're going to, amen, experience the provision, yeah. amen, that God wants for us. Notice Abraham 
did not delay his obedience. That's good. He That's did good. what God had asked him to do, even though he did not even know how God was going to work it out. Sometimes God will require you to do some things, amen, that you don't have a clue how he's going to work it out. But even if you don't have a clue how he's going to work it out, amen, you cannot, amen, uh, be disobedient. I want to uh, submit to you that even delayed obedience is disobedience. Sometimes we say, well, Lord, I did what you told me to do, but God said, but you delayed it. Hallelujah. And I want to let you know that even partial obedience is complete disobedience. You did what he told you to do, but you didn't do all that he told you to do. So it was necessary for Abraham, amen, to complete the trip to Moriah for him to reach the place called provision. And we see here in verse number six, amen, in Genesis 22, we see that Abraham, amen, he took the wood and the, the burnt offering and he laid it upon uh, his son Isaac. Amen. He took the fire, amen, the Bible says fire in his hand and a knife. And they both went together. Verse 7 declares that Isaac says to his father, he says, Now I see the fire and I see the wood, but, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? My God. And as we know, amen, because in his previous uh, verses, he said that me and my son, he said, we're going to go and worship. And so when, when uh, Isaac now notices that, that uh, Abraham has the elements, he's asking now, where's the lamb? Because the lamb being sacrificed, that was going to be the worship. But what God was requiring, God wanted to see, would Abraham be willing to offer his son into the place to worship him? Sometimes, amen, we don't want to do the things, amen, that is required, amen, that God is asking, but, but that's what is really true worship. Hallelujah. We, we think that sometimes the dance is the worship, and the lifting up our hands is a worship, and all of that is good, but a real worship it's when God offers, requires something of you. And it's not something that's just casual to you, but it's something that you love. And when you can take that thing and say, Lord, I'm willing to let it go. That's what God says. It's pure worship, worship. I want to know, do I have any worshipers in the house today? Do I have any worshipers? Do I have any people? This is God, whatever it is, that you're requiring of me in this season. That God, I'm willing to worship you. Lord, I'm willing to lay it down. Even though I like it. Even though I love it. Watch this. Even though you promised it to me. And you gave it to me. I'm willing to worship. He has the elements here. But Abraham said, my son. He said, my son. God will provide. Yes, sir himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So the Bible says that they kept on walking. They went together. And I love the confidence of Abraham that he had in this situation because he was demonstrating confidence in God and a faith to believe that what was, what, uh, was needed that God was going to provide it. And so I just want to encourage you today that many of you Amen. May be facing some situations where you need provision. But I want to say, trust God. Just as God, amen, uh, just like Abraham said to Isaac, the Lord will provide. And just as God provided for uh, Elijah at the brook, I come to let you know, the Lord will provide. The scripture tells us in Matthew 6, 25, it says to us, it said, I want you to take no thought for your life and what you shall eat or what you shall drink and what you shall put on. He said, because is not life more than meat and the body more than raiment. Jesus is telling us in the scripture, he says, stop worrying. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Somebody's going to worry. Somebody that's watching this morning, you've been worried about some things, but the scripture tells us, he says, stop worrying. He goes on to say uh, uh, here, he says that, that he feeds the, the fowl of the air. He says, they don't even sow and they don't even reap. He says, but your heavenly father feedeth them. In other words, 
words, they don't sow, they don't reap, but God sees that the fowls of the air have provision. And the scripture goes on and says, are you not much better than they? Glory to God. He says, are you not better than the fowls of the air? And they don't worry about how they're going to eat, how they're going to drink, how to do. God says, stop worrying because you're better than them and I'm going to provide for you. Oh, I just need somebody to help me say today, he's going to provide for me now. Oh, somebody's worried, how am I going to get through this week? How am I going to get through this month? But somebody help me say, he's going to provide for me. And then the scripture goes on in verse 33. Uh, he says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And he says, and all of these things shall be added unto you. The hand of my Bible says, I want you to aim at and strive after his way of doing things. In other words, when you begin to do things his way, hallelujah, you ain't going to have to worry. Amen. Because he said, all of these things, what things? Those things that you have need of. Those things that you desire, those things that you want. He said, if you seek me first, I'm going to tell your neighbor this morning, you got to prioritize God. Prioritize him. Hallelujah. So if you do the things his way, you don't have to worry because he's going to provide provision. And this is what Abraham was doing here. He was doing the thing God's way. Even though he didn't understand why God would promise him something and then require it, it was God's way. And in verse number 9 and verse 10, Genesis 22, we see that Abraham is preparing and then to go all the way to the point that he ties Isaac up and lays him on the altar and he takes his knife to slay his son. But verse 11 says this, and this is why I have been sharing this, this year that we have to be acquainted with the voice of the Lord. Because the Bible says that the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. It's like Abraham, when he responded, he heard the voice. But it was like, here, here, I, here am I. It's like he was expecting. Amen. God, I don't know how it's going to work out. But I'm just going to be obedient to what you say. And I'm going to believe that you're going to provide. I ran and you got going to take my son and you're going to raise him up. Or maybe you're going to provide some, some other method. And so he says, here am I. And he says, I believe somebody, amen, I just believe, amen, as I was studying, I was, I was getting excited about this, and, and somebody may be up against the wall today, but, but I just want you to listen, the Lord is about to call your name. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, yes, oh, yes, you've been in the back yes. of the line for a long time, but I just want to let you know, even as the Lord called Abraham's name, God is about to call your name. God, you know, I was just thinking this week as, as so many blessings began to just come. Amen. And they just been coming and coming. And I begin, I was beginning to think about how many times I've preached about a turnaround and how many times I've preached about the favor and how many times I've preached about, how about provision and how God's going to work it out. But uh, I just want to let you know that, that the apostle is in a season where God has been providing. I just want to let you know the apostle was in a season but what I preached about. It's not just something I'm preaching about, but it's something that I'm experiencing. I've been experiencing a turnaround. I've been experiencing favor. I've been experiencing glory. I just want to let you know that, that it's a good season. Touch your neighbor and say the second half of this year. You need to be excited about the second half of this year because the second half second half of this year ain't gonna be like 2020 but the second half of this year is about to be an overflow the second half come on I just need you to release a praise if you believe that right now Woo! hallelujah the word of the Lord comes to him after he calls his name he said Abraham Abraham. And he said, here I am. Verse 13, the Bible says that Abraham lifted up his eyes. And what did he do when he lifted up his eyes? The Bible says that he looked behind him. 
And when he looked behind him, the Bible says, uh, amen, that there was a ram that was caught in the thicket by its horns. Now this was really interesting to me, uh, that Abraham had to go all the way to put his son on the altar. Hallelujah. And then it said, but behind him. It makes me think that as they was walking up the hill, that provision was already there. But he couldn't see it. He couldn't see it. Not till he got obedient. Not till he put his son on the altar. Not till he sacrificed. So I just want to preach to somebody that I don't know what God is requiring of you in the second half of this year. But God said, as you do it, as you do it, look behind you. And as you look behind you, you won't find provision. The Bible says that there was a ram that was caught in the thicket. And the Bible says that the angel of the Lord said, don't touch your son. So he took the ram that had been caught in the thicket and he sacrificed the ram and stood of his son. And this is what I like. The Bible says that he builds an altar and that he calls that place Jehovah Jireh. saying is that the Bible says that he called the place the place somebody shout the place so I come to submit to you that the second half of this year that you are about to step in to a place and the place is called I said the place is called Jehovah Shira Jehovah that word that word Jehovah Jireh hallelujah it means to provide it means the word in the Hebrew it means the word see to it hallelujah the Hebrew word also means to proceed and experience so when Abraham calls this place Jehovah Jireh hallelujah and saying you can feel my need and you make provision for it I know somebody got a need today I want to let you know that God says uh, that I'm feeling uh, your need. Uh, he says we do not have a high priest uh, who cannot be touched uh, with the feeling of our infirmities. Uh, hallelujah, but he, uh, hallelujah, but he can feel our weaknesses. Uh, hallelujah, I said he can feel our weaknesses. Uh, Psalm 23 declares uh, that the Lord is. I said the Lord is. I can stop right there. The Lord is. Hallelujah. What has he been to you? Hallelujah. The Lord is. What is the Lord? The Lord is my shepherd. Guess what? And I shall not want. Why do I not have to want? Because the shepherd takes care of the sheep. Hallelujah. Today I come to break the spirit of lack of your life and declare that we are moving. Somebody help me shout, I'm moving into the place called Jehovah Jireh. Hallelujah. Allow the Lord to be our shepherd. Allow the Lord to provide for us. The psalmist here writes the songs. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. Hallelujah. You see, David, David was a shepherd. And he took care of the sheep. He's telling here that the Lord is our shepherd. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to listen to what the shepherd does. He said, the Lord is my shepherd that I shall not want. Verse number two, he said, he makes me to lie down. Hallelujah. In green pastures. Somebody said, what's green pastures? Green pastures is fertile ground. Fertile ground. Fertile ground. Somebody said, my ground is fertile. My ground is fertile. What you are you sowing to in this season? How many of you sowing to me in this season? I declare I'm fertile ground. If you sowing to her, season, your fertile ground. I just want to declare that empowerment church, help me shout it, fertile ground. Fertile ground. Fertile ground. That means when I show something, 
something. That something's getting ready to come back. Hallelujah. As I sow it, I, I'm going to be able to reap a harvest. The Bible says that he restores my soul. What is my soul? My mind, my will, and my emotion. Walk through my dark places. I said as I walk through my dark places, sometimes I even have to face death. Huh? But he said as I walk through it, huh? he said I don't have to fear. Huh? He said I don't have to fear. Huh? Why? Huh? And it says he protects me huh? from my enemies. Huh? Now watch this number six. Huh? It says that he anoints huh? my head huh? with oil. Explain to you real quick uh, what the importance of uh, the oil being anointed over your head. Uh, because there's a place of provision here. Uh, because the sheep, uh, sheep that call dumb sheep, uh, I mean, many times they get their head caught uh, in barriers. Uh, hallelujah to the point, amen, that trying to get untangled uh, out of the thing uh, and feeding their head uh, to the point that they kill themselves. Uh, Somebody say he anoints my head. And there are also times, and there were flies. I knew it would torment the sheep by laying eggs in their nostrils, which would turn into worms and drive the sheep. I knew to again to beat their head against the rock. I knew even to the point of death. I knew their ears and their eyes are susceptible. To too many insects. So the shepherd, what he do? He comes to provide. What is he gonna provide? He's gonna provide the oil. He puts the oil over their head. How do you let the oil? What it does is it causes peace to come. How do you the oil that forms? It forms a barrier of protection against the things that torment the sheep. Somebody said God is anointing my head. Uh, about this time last year, uh, I knew our car had gotten stolen. Uh, my wife was driving, uh, and a car hits her. Uh, we believe the car came up on top of her truck. How uh, knew that car when it hit the ground split open? How uh, knew but she got out uh, without a scratch? How uh, knew because God uh, had put the oil, uh, had put a barrier. Uh, have you ever been in a situation uh, that you said God? Seven, uh, that deserves the light that settle uh, in the Lord, uh, and he 
shall give thee the desires of thy heart. I'm talking about a John 15 that says, If you abide in me and my word abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it will be done to you. I'm talking about it's my father's pleasure to give you the kingdom and give you the kingdom. I'm talking about. talking about provision. God said, don't worry. 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 Hallelujah. Hours short on the job. God said, don't worry. They cut out overtime. God said, don't worry. Don't worry. He said, because I need you to understand that your job is not your source. But what your job is, your job is a resource. But God said to tell you that I am your source. In the second half of this year. The second half of this year. Because you shouldn't have made it to where you are right now. They don't want to fight you, don't want to give you what's yours. But walk around your house and say, Jehovah, Jehovah. prophesy his provision shall be seen. I like this thing because as they was walking up that hill, Abraham said, the Lord will provide. And I like what he says. He said, the Lord's going to provide for himself. You know, amen, whatever... And, and whatever God needs in, in this season, watch this, what I'm about to say, and I'm closing. He's going to provide for himself. Okay? Mm -hmm. But the way he's going to provide for himself mm -hmm. is he's going to put it in your hands. Okay. Amen. 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 flowing through me yeah. and even though I'm having to release some it can't flow through me without me getting some yeah. 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 Yes, so that's the rule yeah. so I thank God for this help, help me shout the second half yeah. of this year that we coming out of this year in other words just like God told him in the book of Exodus he said yeah. when you leave out of Egypt, he said, you're not leaving empty. I know. Right, right. Let me prophesy and let it be declared this day yeah. that you are not leaving 2021 empty. Yeah. You're not leaving 2021 empty. Yes, sir. Oh, copyright. Yes, sir. 